Hey, I didn't see you there. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just doing a bit of creative writing. Yeah, I'm writing a story about a dystopian world. <laughs> you want to see? <laughs> All right, it's the least I can do for you. Check it out. Imagine a world where from the very first day you were brought into it, your destiny has been pre-planned. You were forcefully taken from your parents and jammed into a state building whereby you were slowly brainwashed to become an atomized worker. You were made to recite propaganda, to be obedient and to be disciplined. You were told what defines you as a person is not your morals, your beliefs or your dreams, but your work. You are made to worship on the altar of capital, of money, and the materialistic vices that come with such are made to define your existence entirely. You are taught to betray your friends, snub your family, and outcompete those like you. You were made for one purpose, to learn, work, and then die. As stated, your destiny was pre-planned. In this world, your nation, whatever it so may be, is but an illusion. It has a flag, an anthem, and a border, but it is all but comic relief. Nations today are not families of families, as they should be, but stocks, of which can be invested, or deposited, as per appropriate. In this world, to our leaders, the elite, a nation is but a prostitute, of which they can use for their temporary pleasure, and disregard when they've had their fun. Your history, your stability, your economy, your culture, and your religion is but a sideshow to them. Disposable details that can be disregarded, for all that matters is what's in it for them. In this world, when people look at their so-called leaders, they say, they do not represent me, which leads many to ask, who votes for these people? but they should know that by merely asking such a question, they have already been led astray. Here, democracy is the illusion that them, as mere peasants, have a say in their country's affairs. But if the options they can pick from have all been compromised beforehand, then they are merely picking their favorite color. The elite love democracy, for in it they can buy politicians as their puppets, who like the showmen they are, can sing sweet melodies to the public, and put on fancy displays of artificial contention. When in reality, what is important always remains the same regardless. Blame left, blame right, blame blue, blame red. But in the end, they are but two cheeks of the same backside. And only when the brightest amongst both perspectives unite and see this, will real change ever truly arise. When such a day comes, they shall know. For those who dare to dream will be slandered like never before. Always follow those most mocked. In this world, as people are now machines of work, they treasure what little time they have to spend on pleasures, the bread and circus. They live in virtual fantasies of joy as their real world slowly burns down around them. And when it comes to matters of importance, they no longer harness the willpower to research and learn themselves. The people now outsource their opinions, thoughts, and beliefs to others, others whom they perceive as trustworthy. The mindless masses worship the wealthy, the powerful, and the famous. With the wealthy, they say, to have such riches, they must be smart, therefore, I trust them. With the powerful, they say, to be in such a position means they must be wise, therefore, I trust them. And with the famous, they say, to have such a following means that they must be great, and therefore, I trust them. Little do they know that most wealth, power and fame is now artificial, gifted at a whim to those who will toe the party line, 
as the good puppets they are. All beings are blessed with a brain, and yet have been taught not to use it, but to instead let others do the thinking for them. After all, are they not authoritative? Are they not the experts? Know your place, lowly one, so they think. The truth is that when they say the sky is blue, no, it is red. When they say it is day, no, it is night. And when they say you are fine, no, that you are not. Perception is the key to understanding the world, and thus yourself. But if you allow your perception to be dictated by a gender, then you will soon find yourself an inadvertent part of it. There is no such thing as good people and bad people, but people who do good and bad things. Yet in this world, when a person looks in the mirror, they see themselves as good, even if their hands were bathed in the blood of innocence. They always underestimate their mind's fragility into being fooled to commit evil against their fellow men in the name of false good. In the 1960s, they were hugging trees. Today, they chop them down. There is naught more dangerous than a devil who sees himself with a halo. Evil here does not have horns, but masquerades with a friendly mask. Evil here does not seek to anger, but to soothe. Evil here is not the man in the cell, but the man in the suit. They should be aware, and always ask. In life, there must be strife. The hero, the villain, and the purpose. In the past, it was tribe v tribe, which evolved into nation v nation. But in this world, it is the elite who dictate the hero, the villain, and the purpose. It can often be illogical, contrary to the very foundational beliefs the mindless masses say they espouse. But as they are the hero, they believe they can do no wrong. Are the enemies not villains, they say? Do you not align with the purpose, they say? Little do they realize that they are the villain, and their purpose is to slay the hero. They shall know, in the end, but by then, the damage will have already been done. In this world, the elite are adverse to the spotlight, hiding behind think tanks and supernatural organizations. Their names are but atoms in a sea of credits, yet at the same time, their influence is greater than that of the brightest stars. Such is the nature of the billionaires. The billionaires are the puppet masters who hold the strings, but the puppets are not like them. The puppets are the public faces, the pseudo-religious idols of celebrity made for the mindless masses to worship. When they say jump, the mindless masses say how high. Their fame is as illusionary as the beliefs they are forced to uphold, and can be taken away in mere seconds. The mindless masses do not ask why their false idols all espouse identical beliefs. They do not ask why their musicians promote objectification and violence. They do not ask why their movies linger with the stench of agenda. They do not ask why their games bleed with greed. They do not ask for they have been conditioned not to. Those topics are off-limits. Remember, their destiny has been pre-planned. They were made to learn, work, and die. Consume the products, and do not ask the questions. He who knows not that there are questions to ask will never seek any answers. In this world, the modern man is treated as a walking bank account and judged solely for what he can do for others. Meanwhile, the modern woman is treated as mere meat to be used and abused by lustful animals. If you were to ask the men if they feel respected and valued by their women, you should already know the answer. And if you were to ask the women if they feel respected and valued by their men, again, you should already know the answer. Men and women are but two sides of the same human coin, equal but different, each with a role to fulfill. But in this world, these lines have been blurred, and intentionally so. The sadness that blooms from both is natural, but the reasons why are artificial. Again, the elite's invisible strings linger from above. Family is the enemy of our leaders, for family brings belonging, support, and stability. Therefore, its destruction has been long sought after, with much success. In this world, it is easier to slay your own offspring than it is to raise them. 
In fact, such murderous acts are advertised as liberating and freeing, applauded by the mindless masses, whereas being a good mother or father is met with scorn and merciless criticism. They never ask themselves, why does society celebrate death while frowning at life? Humans here are not seen as inherently valuable, a flesh, blood and a soul, but mere empty vessels, a clump of cells, again atomized. With the rise of globalization, one would expect humanity to be more united as ever. But in this world, unity is not the goal, but division. A stalwart shield can never be broken, but a house divided cannot stand. The masses are intentionally divided into factions that they themselves have not and cannot choose, based on immutable characteristics. These factions are then set against one another when the opportunity arises as to sow an endless ping-pong of discord. When the masses fight with each other, they will never fight those pulling their strings. No more love thy neighbour, but blame thy neighbour. Chaos as designed. Ever since our genesis living in caves, man has known that we are but servants, guided by the stars, lovingly by our creator. Yet in this world, people have been intentionally disconnected from such spirituality. Lured into concrete jungles via false promises of riches, whereby we lose our sense of what it means to be human and our natural affinity with nature is broken. But the wise know that this world is but an illusion. Those who fear the jesters and crave the comforts of the lady in blue know this all too well. Dimensions above that our mortal eyes cannot even comprehend, even if we tried. But we are told not to. Do not linger on the majestic, they say. Now is the time for progress, they say. But little do they know that the only progress they shall make is to their graves. If you was to ask them what they think of today, they would say that they hate it. Yet if you were to ask them what they thought of today a decade from now, they would say that it was the good times. If only they knew what was to come, and how this is merely the calm before it. The life that they see themselves living is not the one they shall get. The wisest realise this early on, and make the appropriate amendments as such. Those who know will feel the sudden weight of the world on their shoulders, blessed yet also cursed, drowning in a sea of ignorance within a pantomime society. Yet despite the coming strife and the nihilistic hopelessness one may feel from such revelations, a fate has all been foretold. Those whose hearts are filled with righteousness will, in the beginning, be mocked, then hated, and finally persecuted. But in the final twilight gasps of humanity, the most unlikely of alliances shall blossom. There will be many obstacles and much confusion, but in the end, they who have resilience shall overpower those who spread discord, alongside their misguided minions, whereby even in the hereafter they shall find no respite. And let there be among you a community calling to virtue, and advocating righteousness, and deterring from evil. These are the successful. <laughs> ah, good thing we don't live in that world, eh, lads? <laughs> ah. Hmm.